AITA for not charging my son rent on a home he partially owns? I am not the OOP. OOP is you, the housing dilemma. AITA for not charging my son rent on a home he partially owns? Originally posted to R, am I the asshole? Giving thanks to you, legitimate reserve 445 for the help on the relevant comments. Original post April 4th, 2023. My oldest son, 24, is not my wife's biological child, and is my child with my late wife. My late wife and I bought a three-bedroom house when we got married. When I remarried, my current wife moved into this house with me, but I never put her name on the deed. The house was only in my name. My wife and I ended up having several children and needing to move into a bigger house. When we bought our new home, she wanted me to sell the old one. I said no, that this home was something my late wife and I purchased with the hope of one day passing on to our son. I would make it a rental property instead. That was one of the biggest fights we ever had. She insisted we compromise, but I refused to do so. When my son graduated from college, I put his name on the deed to the house with mine, which was another fight, but I felt he was the appropriate inheritor to his mother's share. I didn't share any of the rental income with him thought, as I was still paying all the taxes and insurance. At this point, the mortgage is paid off. I net over 2k a month from this house, which goes into the household budget. My son just got engaged and wants to move into the house after he marries his fiance. He suggested he pay half rent and eventually buy out my share of the house. I told my son I agreed to his plan of saving up to buy out my share. But instead of paying rent, he should just take over the taxes and insurance. We agreed to this. My wife is livid and says I am a massive asshole for dramatically decreasing our household income. Without consulting her, she likened my decision to financial abuse. I suggested we downsize to a smaller house now that our oldest two kids are leaving the nest. And we can rent out the larger one and be in the same situation as before. Owning two homes and getting rental income from one. She called me a selfish prick and won't speak to me now. Am I the asshole? Verdict. Not the asshole. Relevant comments. No location 5565. NTA. But I think everyone is a little harsh on your wife here. I wouldn't call it financial abuse. It almost sounds like she got advice from Reddit too. We love calling everything abuse here. But discussing major financial decisions with your spouse is healthy relationships 101. Curiously. It doesn't sound like you intend to be able to provide for all of your children in the same manner. Is this part of the problem? Oop replied. Obviously every parent wants to provide for their children. But this is also about honoring my late wife and making sure her assets go to her child. I think I owe her that. After all, I only gave him her share. My share he is going to buy. Truthfully, I gifted him nothing. Blue Monogi. YTA for not talking to your wife about any of this before making major decisions. Seems like you guys could use some marriage counseling and maybe a lawyer, financial advisor. I don't think it is bad to want your son to have this house. Maybe your wife is concerned about the money or maybe it is more your emotional attachment, preference to your late wife and eldest son that she has more of an issue with. Are you planning to give your other children similar opportunities? Oop replied. My children with my wife are entitled to inherit our joint assets. Just like my son with my late wife is entitled to inherit this house. Peaches and Drama. Info since the house wasn't paid off before remarrying. How much did your wife contribute towards paying off the mortgage? Even if she wasn't on the deed. If she contributed a significant amount of money towards the mortgage during the marriage I can understand a certain amount of saltiness. Oop replied. Practically speaking. She didn't. She paid some in the four years she lived there. 
but it was less than she would have been paying in rent. One more comment from Oop. We moved when my wife was pregnant with our third child. Four years after our marriage. We lived in the house together for four years. During that time, some of her money would have gone towards the mortgage. As we don't have separate finances when it comes to living expenses. And both of us were living there. That mortgage was a lot less than rent in that area. She still saved money from what she would have been paying. And she made money when I started renting it out. Because that profit went into the household budget. Overall, she profited from the house. Even though the vast majority of the contributions to it were from myself and my late wife. Update I talked to my wife and son about the house April 9, 2023. Thanks to everyone that shared their perspectives. Looking at outside points of view was enlightening. This house is very complicated for me. I bought this house with my first wife. And for a long time. It represented the life not lived. A past that can't be reclaimed. Every room held memories that were a pitfall of emotion. One of the biggest fights I ever had with my current wife was about repainting the toddler's room which I had last repainted with my late wife. Moving out of that house probably saved my marriage. We got to start over in a home that was just ours. So while yes, the home is a financial asset, it's also a source of emotional turmoil. Each time I walk inside, I'm hit with a bittersweet feeling, as I remember something I did there with my late wife. Anyway, I took my son and his fiance to dinner. I talked to them about the house and what it represents. They talked about their plans to start a family there. Just like his mom and I did. That made me emotional. I said I wanted to go ahead and put the house in both their names. Even though they weren't married yet. I've been thinking a lot about his mom lately. And I think this is what she would want. They aren't going to pay me anything. But they are insisting on paying all the fees associated with drawing up a new deed. Which is fine. They also don't want me to contribute anything financially to the wedding anymore. I agreed with these things. Although I will still get them a gift. For a long time. That house has been full of strangers. But now my late wife's pictures will be on the walls again. And her family will grow inside. I think she will like that. Deep down. I always thought of that house as hers. So this makes me happy. The conversation with my wife was a little more complicated. When I told her I was giving them the houses. Not having them buy me out. And I was going to do it before the wedding. She was really annoyed. She said it was a dumb decision. And that I was taking a huge financial risk on someone not even related to me. My son's fiance. She asked what I would do if they broke up. We argued for a while. But she eventually said she was done talking about it. But that she was very disappointed in me. We've lived in our current house 16 years. It's a massive home that we don't really need anymore with one kid moved out and two kids on the verge of moving out. I think we should downsize from a 6 bedroom to a 4 bedroom. But I'm going to wait until she isn't mad anymore to suggest this again. With the way the real estate market has gone. We could rent out the individual rooms in this house for close to three times what our mortgage payment on it is. And live in a smaller, more manageable property. She may or may not go for this. It depends. Regardless. We are in a fine financial situation. I feel good about my decision. It isn't about the money. It's about honoring those who are gone. And I feel like I did that. This is a repost sub I am not the oop. I don't think I could ever remarry if my wife passes because I would probably be worse than oop in. This post when it comes to honoring his late wife. My wife is my everything and I don't think I'd ever move on. I do think oop should have just put the house in his son's name though just in case. Yeah that was stupid, adding the fiancé to the deed. As long as she didn't pay for the house or put any money into it I'm not sure why she would be. 
upset about a premarital asset. She wouldn't have claimed it. If she invested in it somehow I could see getting upset. But it doesn't sound that way from the posts. I want to give half of a house to someone who is considering marrying my son. Oop has some bizarre ideas and apparently makes decisions based entirely on the vagaries of his current emotional state. I dunno. I think his wife is right about holding on until after the marriage to update the deed. I don't understand why he keeps Putong people's names on the deed. Instead of making a will of putting the house in a trust. In order to avoid inheritance taxes. I'm sorry. He wouldn't let her paint a room for their child because his dead wife painted it first? And it was a huge fight. To the point that selling the house helped save their marriage? This guy never should have remarried and needed therapy 20 years ago. I'm pretty sure Oop never properly dealt with the death of his late wife. And he needs help for that. I'd be upset too if my partner made major financial decisions without even consulting me. Owner of the asset be damned. If my household budget is about to be cut by 2k per month. That involves me firsthand. And she's right about her stepson's fiancé. They're not married yet. What if the wedding falls through? A quick look through many subs here will net you at least one and often more weddings being called. Off for a variety of reasons. She's not being greedy. She's frustrated that her husband of at least 16 years is making important decisions out of his ass. I'd be pissed too. Oop's wife is kinda right about the fiancé LMAO if something happens he's gonna lose that house that his wife worked so hard for. I know that a lot of PPL are ragging on the current wife for being controlling about the house. Especially BC it's not hers. But it really does not sound like this guy has ever come to terms with his first wife dying. The biggest fight they ever got into was repainting the walls of this house. And his wife is right. It's a huge decision to give away a house and a source of income without even telling her first ID. Be extremely pissed too. And why the hell OS this guy giving half the house to his son's girlfriend? That's something you do once they're married man. This is a mess. I'm honestly not sure why everyone seems to be piling on the second wife in this situation. The father is basically not consulting her about things that can and will affect their lives and potentially their livelihoods, unless they are very well off already. $2,000 per month loss of income is a huge hurdle and regardless if the home was a premarital asset, needs to be discussed as a family. Instead, husband is lost in some glorious past and steamrolling his now wife. Then painting her here to be some vindictive witch out to cash grab on his first wife's home. If they've been together long enough to have several children together, she should have a say in how the household finances are distributed instead. It sounds like the father isn't willing to listen to her opinions at all which is the root of the fights. Hopefully they can come to a common ground now that the house is out of the picture. But the father, husband here seems to have his dead wife and the life they could have lived on a pedestal his current wife can never hope to reach. He didn't sound like the asshole in the original. But he certainly was in the update. Adding fiancé to the deed? Dumb. Not talking with your wife first dumber. I'm glad Oop is trying to do right by his eldest I'm sure we've all seen our fair share of the opposite but something's off about the way he's going about it. He should have gone to therapy instead of looking for a new wife. They should have talked thoroughly about living arrangements after marriage. Or bought a new home if no compromise could be found. He didn't put his current wife on the deed. But has put his FDIL. And expects her to be okay with this? He should have put his son and let him decide what he does. And what of the other kids? Will they be gifted homes too? Honestly? 
I am like 90% on the wife's side on this one. The house might have been a premarital asset but the income from it is now shared. On paper it's fine to say it goes 100% to his son there. But now she gets to explain to her kids how their dad gave the eldest with this random fiancé a full house while they get shafted. Makes it super awkward when the rental income was helping their family unit before. Dude is an ah who needed therapy rather than getting remarried and having more kids. Somehow this reads as though the children of the second marriage are his stepkids. I had to go back and check. I can understand why the wife is upset he is still married to the past. With the way the real estate market has gone, we could rent out the individual rooms in this house for close to three times what our mortgage payment on it is. Screw over working class people for personal gain. It's exactly why the housing market is the way it is. Doesn't this guy have three other kids who I assume were raised along with the eldest who won't be given a house for free? How is that going to go down when talks of favoritism appear? TBF, I wouldn't have put the fiancé's name on the deed. It's his son's inheritance. The husband seems to be still hung up on memories from his life with his late wife and on. Unfulfilled dreams I wonder how much that showed in his relationship with his current wife. Which whom he seems to have lived for almost 20 years and with whom he has several children. He makes her sound like a jerk in his posts. But all I see is him justifying his unilateral decisions regarding very important financial issues. I do think the older son is entitled to half of their original house. As he inherits it from his mother. But technically the other half, its value would be split equally between him and his half-siblings. As they would inherit it from their father. He wants to make a nice gesture towards his son. But he is being unfair to his other children and that's what his wife sees too. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like share, and subscribe.